Bryce Harper is only 31 years old. It was actually just his birthday the other day. And I almost couldn't believe that because we've been talking about Harper for years and years and he's only 31. And looking back when we first started talking about Bryce Harper into when he came into the league 2012 with the Washington Nationals, and looking to now with him dominating the postseason, there's so much that has been said about Bryce Harper. In my years, I don't think I've seen a player be scrutinized and praised both at seemingly equal levels at different points of their career, quite like Bryce Harper. This is a guy who's been voted by the players of Major League Baseball as the most overrated three separate occasions. And at the same token, He's won two Most Valuable Player Awards. Bryce's Major League debut, he got booed by the visiting crowd, the number one prospect, you know, a generational prospect that you'd think everybody would be so excited to see, yet they weren't. Or maybe they were, but they just love to hate him. And I think it all starts as a kid, high school baseball, travel ball, for Bryce Harper. I mean, we're talking about a guy who graced the cover of Sports Illustrated at the age of 15, being touted as the chosen one of baseball, quite literally in words on the cover, getting the LeBron James comparison. Within that story, rumors of him hitting a 500 and 70 foot home run. It was clear anybody that showed up in the bleachers to watch him, his coaches, or any of the players that faced him, Bryce Harper was going to be something beyond special. I mean, he was so talented. He was progressing so far in baseball. His parents decided to get him there a little quicker, got his GED. He went to a junior college. Also, he could get to the MLB draft one year quicker. He was drafted the number one overall pick by the Washington Nationals at the age of 17 out of a JUCO school. And I think that sets the stage well enough. Everybody's talking about him. Everybody's already crowning him as baseball saving grace. A lot of people want to see him fail. They don't like that this kid is getting more coverage than some of their major league team's best player. They think it's outlandish that this 15-year-old is somehow dominating baseball media. And no doubt Bryce Harper fanned the flames a little bit. In 2010, a National Junior College World Series game Bryce Harper got ejected, arguing with the umpire over a called third strike, drawn a line in the dirt, and he ended up getting suspended for it. And his team ended up losing that World Series. He's cocky. He's full of himself. Minor leagues. He hits a home run off a pitcher. He blows him a kiss rounding third. I love the fire. I love the passion to compete like that at a young age. But you also go into that knowing you're putting a target on your own back. So it's really no surprise then when he did get the call up to the big leagues for the Nationals in 2012 that he wasn't necessarily embraced with open arms. Nothing shows that better than Harper's eighth game in the majors where Cole Hamels intentionally hit him in his first at bat. Now there was a little debate around that, but Hamels later in a press conference after the game confirmed that he hit him on purpose. But of course, after getting hit by Hamels, after drawing that free base, he got around a third and ended up stealing home. Just a week into Harper's major league career, you can pretty much already gather the entire conversation around him. And throughout his first couple years, that kept building. He made his first all-star team in 2012 on top of playing an excellent outfield for the Nationals. Splitting time between center field and right field, he had 14 Teen defensive run saved. And in his fourth year in the league at 22 years old, he won his first MVP, putting up one of the best seasons that I have ever seen in my lifetime. One of the best seasons that we've probably seen since the inflated steroid era stats. 42 home runs. He had an OPS at 1,109. In his first four years, you could already see Harper was destined for greatness. The hype given to a 15-year-old child were certainly looking like they were coming true. But I think what overshadowed that is the team's success. The Washington Nationals were very good around that time. They had fellow first overall pick Steven Strasburg, guys who had been there for quite a while. Ryan 
Ryan Zimmerman, Jason Wirth, Ian Desmond, Anthony Rendon, another first round pick. Max Scherzer, of course, got brought into Washington. They had a loaded team but they could never make it past the first round. And of course, the biggest name, the biggest face, is the one who tends to get the blame. And to those fans' credit, they're not entirely wrong. Bryce Harper, in his four postseason series with the Washington Nationals, he didn't play like the chosen one. He underperformed by a decent margin what he was able to do in the regular season. Besides the 2014 NLDS, where he famously hit and admired two big home runs against Hunter Strickland, which led to one of the more memorable moments within the last decade or so of baseball. But besides that four-game stretch, which the Nationals would ultimately go on to lose, Harper's numbers didn't live up to people's expectations. And so the Nationals and Bryce Harper would build the reputation as playoff chokers. They have their fun in the summer, but come October, come the fall, we know what's going to happen at least until 2019. I think we all know the story. After the 2018 season, Harper became an unrestricted free agent, and he signed a massive deal with the Philadelphia Phillies. Following that, the Nationals had lessened expectations, losing their best player, started the season very slow, barely made their way out of the wild card game. Thankfully, a Trent Grisham error helped send them on to the next round, and the Nationals ended up winning the World Series, beating the Houston Astros. The one year that Bryce Harper isn't there, the Nationals not only win a series, they win multiple, and they win the first championship in franchise history. And it was right around that time then that the overrated narrative on Bryce Harper probably reached its peak, which if you look at the numbers, Bryce Harper was still performing very well. He was excellent as a Washington National in the seven years that he gave them. And that first season in Philadelphia, he was, again, very good, put up great numbers. Phillies in the win column, not such a great number, but it's that under lying lack of postseason success and seeing his former team succeed once he's gone that really overshadowed and built the narrative that Harper's overrated. And we're gonna circle back to that damn Sports Illustrated cover once more because if that didn't happen, if he wasn't the first overall pick at 17 years old out of a junior college, if he wasn't national news, ESPN talking about him as much as they did, people would not have the same feelings about him. Fair or unfair, unprecedented hype calls for for unprecedented performance. And he did that in the regular season, but not in the postseason. Baseball's a weird game. They, they play 162 of them in the regular season alone. And as you might know, most of them aren't nationally televised. I mean, ESPN will have a couple of games and their reliable Sunday night baseball once a week. Fox will show a couple of games throughout the end of the year. Hell, even regional sports networks are getting harder and harder to access at this point. So people aren't watching regular season baseball as much. It's not football, where it's condensed down to 17 games. Come Sunday, everybody's sitting on the couch watching. For baseball, the time where people are going to get a chance to watch these guys play is come postseason. And at that point, a lot of people don't give a damn what she did in April. Basically defined Bryce Harper's first decade in Major League Baseball, despite putting up Hall of Fame track level stats in the regular season, winning another MVP in 2021, there was a big judgment cloud raining all over his parade until 2022. Because that's when it all changed. The Phillies making their first playoff appearance since 2011. It started with the wild card series against the Cardinals. The Phillies win the first game, game two, setting the tone early second inning homer from Bryce Harper would carry them the rest of the way. And the Phillies would sweep St. Louis, go on to the divisional series where Bryce Harper would take it up yet another notch. Game one of the DS against the Braves, Bryce Harper puts up a three for three performance, including a walk for good measure. After that, adds on two home runs in game three and game four, a couple of blowout victories. And the Phillies are heading to the championship series, taking on the Padres. Where for me... 
sets the stage for the quintessential Bryce Harper moment to this point in his career. Game five, Philly is down by one in the eighth inning, and Bryce Harper hits the dagger. Hits a two-run shot taking the lead in the moment that would clinch the Phillies heading to the World Series. And while the Phillies came up a bit short, they lost against Houston in six games. It was very clear this is a different Bryce Harper. And I think you're seeing that once again this year. The Divisional Series against the Braves. An on-base percentage of 6-11 in Game 3 after Orlando Arcia talking some smack about him. After Bryce got doubled up in Game 2 that would lead to the Braves winning, Bryce responded. Two home runs as the Phillies would blow out the Braves 10-2 and then take the next game, beating the Braves in four. And now on to the championship series is Bryce Harper's playing first base. He had an elbow injury last year, had to get Tommy John started this season late, couldn't play the outfield, the position he's played all of his professional career. And the Phillies who needed a first baseman, Reese Hoskins, tore his ACL in spring training. Bryce Harper steps up, learns how to play the position, and to his credit, he's played it pretty damn well. You would not guess that he's only played first base for, what, four months. And I think it really shows you how much Bryce Harper's bought in at this point. He's not the same guy that he was when he started with the Washington Nationals. Harper, they love him over there. But it's more than that. It's a shift from the baseball public. Harper's viewed a lot differently now than he was viewed a decade ago, five years ago, hell, even three years ago. And I think once again, it just proves winning heals all wounds. And while the Phillies haven't captured that World Series yet, this season ain't over, and they're looking pretty damn good. So all in all, the story of Bryce Harper up to this point is a difficult subject. He didn't necessarily ask for this attention. Now, he, he did accept being on the cover of Sports Illustrated. I don't think they took a picture of him without his knowledge. And as I mentioned, I think he bought into that heel role. He fanned the flames. He didn't go out of his way to say, hey, I'm the good guy, which I really do respect. He doesn't care what you think. He's going to show you what he's got. And while it may have taken him quite a while to get here... He's only 31 years old, and Bryce Harper's got a lot of story left to tell.